all the source models are actually generated from a general mechanical energy balance such as this so if you notice uh, it is an uh, equation for incompressible flow so the leaks can either be compressible or incompressible flow so for throughout this uh, study we will only consider uh, incompressible flow so this uh, mechanical energy balance uh, is actually a summation of all the energy forces that can act uh, upon a leak so the first uh, component is uh, pressure energy it is a pressure that drives the liquid through the hole and then the second component is the kinetic energy so pressure energy is converted to kinetic energy as liquid escapes and then the third one is the potential energy so potential energy uh, is usually uh, present for a hole that is above the ground so if uh, if it is not if it is there is no height to it it's not if the hole is not above the ground so this potential energy will become zero and then there is frictional losses so the frictional losses are the point where the liquid is passing through the hole so the, it has to pass through the sides of the hole that ruptures so those are frictional losses and also uh, the fact that it has to as the liquid uh, shoots out then it also there's also frictional losses along the wall and that uh, total energy is equivalent to the mechanical energy from pumps and turbines if they are attached to the system okay let's look into the first uh, source model so for flow of liquid through a hole so we have two parts to it so one part is the pressurized uh, system so the unit uh, the liquid is is in a tank and it's uh, pressurized and then there's a hole uh, sorry the liquid can be in a tank or it can also be in a, a pipeline and then uh, there's a hole to it and there's a leak okay so it exits to the surrounding okay in this case uh, there is no height involved okay so there is no potential energy so if we go back to this uh, previous equation of uh, mechanical energy balance so for the first uh, source model there is no potential energy and there is also no uh, mechanical energy from the pumps and turbine so we use whatever that is left to form a source model and that model will give us these equations the derivation of the equation is outlined in the textbook so here I'm presenting the equations that will be useful uh, for our calculation later so the first uh, equation uh, gives us the velocity of fluid exiting the leak so we can find the velocity of fluid that exits the leak okay and then it we can also there's also an equation for mass flow rate resulting from the hold area a so that will give us how much of material that is being uh, that is leaking and then that will give us uh, uh, an, an idea of the possible impact that it will cause to the surrounding okay so this uh, mass energy balance um, is uh, is also density uh, times the velocity and the area of the leak so uh, mass energy balance actually gives us kilogram per second of um, material that will be lost through the leaking so with this uh, so therefore the total mass of liquid spilled will actually depend on the time total time the leak was active so we will have um, a mass flow rate per second so then we can times with the total time that it was leaking to get the total mass flow rate So if you notice um, in these equations, 
there's this term C naught. Okay. C naught is actually a discharge uh, coefficient which accounts for friction. So uh, it's called orifice discharge. Orifice is the small hole, the leak, uh, the point where there is a leak. So that's orifice, the opening. So this is a discharge coefficient that accounts for the friction effect. So if, uh, let's say you don't know the friction, you don't know uh, uh, the C naught, so we can assume 1. That means there is no friction. So 1 uh, also means uh, uh, we account for maximum possible uh, impact from the leak. Okay. Then we can also, if we know the liquid is turbulent, it's flowing in a turbulent flow, we can assume the C0 to be 0 0.61. So we have a few conditions that has been lined out uh, and the relevant C0 is um, presented. So for example, when we have a sharp aged orifice and the Reynolds number is greater than 30,000, so the C0 is about 0.61 okay and then for a well-rounded nozzle the discharge coefficient approaches 1 so this one is like this is the maximum uh, uh, is, this is the condition where maximum possible leak can happen okay and then for short section of pipes attached to a vessel okay so it's, there's a ratio the discharge coefficient is approximately 0 0.81 and so when we are not certain of it so we use one to maximize the computed flow so this uh, discharge coefficients uh, you can either use uh, this given uh, figures depending on the relevant condition and they are actually derived from this graph of discharge coefficient against Reynolds number. So if you notice when we have this 10,000, 20, 30,000 so and beyond 30,000 it is 0 0.61 so that's what that was mentioned to, to you in the previous slide. Okay so we can either use this um, graph to get a discharge coefficient or we can estimate and we can use uh, this inf this uh, CO values for the respective condition. Okay, let's look into example 4.1. Alright, the question states at 1 pm the plant operator notices a drop in pressure in a pipeline transporting benzene. So the pressure was immediately restored to 100 psig so that means um, the transportation is taking place at this pressure at 2 30 pm a quarter inch diameter leak is found in the pipeline and immediately repaired estimate the total amount of benzene spilled and it's given the specific gravity of benzene is mm, 0 0.8794 Right, so here we want to know the total amount of benzene spilled. So total amount of benzene spilled can be calculated using the mass flow rate. So we find the mass flow rate. So we will find uh, flow rate per second and then we times by the uh, amount of time the leaking has been taking place. Okay, the leaking has been taking place from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. So that is 90 minutes. Okay, so to use this flow rate equation, we need to know the A. A is the area of the leak. C0, the orifice discharge coefficient. And then we want to know the density of the benzene. Okay, so we, we know the... Uh, pressure gauge PG which is uh, 100 PSIG and uh, we know the gravitational constant because it's a fixed value okay um, right so first we look for the A 
uh, area of the hole is pi d square over 4. So pi, the d is its quarter inch diameter. So it's d square. So this is actually the conversion rate of inch to feet. Because 1 feet is equivalent to 12 inch. So that's why when it is uh, square, so you square the conversion as well. Okay, so that's how we get the uh, area in feet square. Then the density of benzene. So if you notice in the question, uh, we are given specific gravity. So specific gravity means it is a ratio of uh, is a ratio of density uh, of any components. So in this case, it's benzene against water. So it's a ratio of density of benzene to water is 0 0.8794. So to get the actual density of benzene, we have to times this specific gravity to density of water. So this value is also fixed, density of wa water. So this it is 62.4 for this unit. So for different units, there's a fixed value. So you can find this in the appendix of the book. So that's how we get the density of benzene. And finally, we need to decide on the C0, the discharge orifice. So in this case, it is assumed to be 0 0.61. So why it is uh, 0 0.61? So because of uh, the exit velocity of the fluid is independent of the size of the hole. So we choose 0 0.61. Okay, with all the information unknown in unknown parameters known, we can now calculate the uh, mass flow rate. So you see the reason we are using the mass flow rate of uh, uh, liquid through a hole that means uh, there is no potential energy here it doesn't there is no height above the liquid so there's a hole along the line so that is why we are using the source model one this liquid flow through a hole and that's why we're using this equation okay so if we substitute all these parameters with the relevant values uh, so the a times by c naught and then 2 then you have the density that we just found and then this is a, a gravitational constant in uh, pound mass over pound force so this is also found in the appendix this is a constant value so for different units we will have a different value here okay and then uh, this is the pressure gauge so the pressure gauge uh, was given as 100 here 100 psig so we substituted the 100 so once again um, we have inches in this project pressure gauge so that's why we are converting it to feet square so we times by 144 which is 12 by 12 okay so that gives us a flow rate pound mass per second so the question wants us to estimate the total amount of benzene spilled. So we use this value, the flow rate, times by 90 minutes. Uh, so the 90 minutes we convert to second. So we get the value of 7990 pound mass. And that can also be converted further to gallon. So that's how we solve example 4.1. Okay, now let's look at the second source model flow of liquid through a hole in a tank so here uh, if this is the hole then there is more liquid above the hole so there is potential energy here this is called hydrostatic heat this is hl so the pressure at hole due to hydrostatic heat plus ambient pressure so we also have ambient pressure acting on on the fluid and we also have the this height hl of uh, hydrostatic heat which contributes to the potential energy so for this condition 
um, the flow is maximum at T0. That means when it just starts to flow, the flow is at maximum and it decreases with time because this pressure and the height decreases. So for this flow uh, of liquid through a hole in a tank, if we look at this uh, mechanical, the general uh, mechanical energy balance, all of these are in use. The potential energy is present. The frictional losses is present. Kinetics and pressure is present. But there is no mechanical energy from pumps or turbine. So the equations for uh, the second source model is derived from this components in the mechanical energy balance. So this is the equation that we get for mass flow rate for a source model where liquid through a hole in a tank. Okay, so there is uh, this uh, static head term in the equation. The mass flow rate translates to this term which is uh, mass flow at different times. So it's mass over the time. So it changes, the mass flow rate changes with time. And this mass flow rate can be translated into the height of the vessel that contains the liquid which is flowing through a tank. So this equation can actually tell us the liquid level as a function of time and discharge rate as a function of time which means we can know at different time how much liquid is being discharged and at different times what is the height of the tank. So this equation when substituted into the uh, flow, mass flow rate equation this one so we arrive to first equation we, we arrive to liquid level height in the tank as a function of time so for a certain time we can estimate what is the liquid height in the tank and uh, to obtain a mass discharge rate at a time so we get a qm this is mass flow rate as a function of time again so at a particular time we can find how much of the fluid has already leaked from the hole okay so some we use this uh, so when sometimes when there is a hole leak and we don't know when the leak happened so after we have identified the hole and then we can calculate by that time uh, how much of the material has escaped and how much of the liquid is left in the tank okay so this hl naught uh, is the initial mass discharge rate okay and this equation can also be uh, further uh, uh, substituted to give us the time to empty the vessel to the level of the leak okay so here the hl naught becomes zero the so for t after setting setting sorry not hl not the hl will become zero so when it becomes zero so the equation becomes this so uh, this is not hl not yeah hl so the equation here when we set the HL to zero, so we can get the time to empty the tank. So we use this equation for time to empty the tank. And if the vessel is at atmospheric pressure, so the equation, this equation is further reduced to this equation. So for this uh, liquid flow through a tank, these are the uh, important equations that we will be using. Let's look into example 4.2. So here a cylindrical tank 20 feet high and 8 feet in diameter is used to store benzene. Okay. 
The tank is padded with nitrogen to a constant regulated pressure of 1 atm gauge. So it, this is the pressure that is being kept and then the liquid level within the tank is at 17 feet. So we have quite a number of um, information given. So it would be good if we can draw a, a sketch to see uh, to fit the values. So this is the total tank height. So you have this is uh, 20 feet. Okay. And then the diameter is eight okay so you have eight feet and then uh, the fluid is kept at 17 feet so it's at 17 feet and then we have a one inch puncture occurred in the tank at five feet of the ground so it's one inch five feet of the ground so this is the ground so five feet of the ground is about here okay so this is about five feet okay so this is where the hole is okay so estimate the gallons of benzene spilled so they want how much of benzene can actually spill out so there's 12 feet of benzene above the hole here and then the time required for the benzene to leak out so how much time to empty from from this for this to empty this 12 feet height so because it will leak until the hole it won't leak beyond the hole and then the maximum mass flow rate of benzene through the leak so maximum mass flow rate happens at time is equals to zero so we will find the mass flow rate at time t is equals to zero okay so this is what we're going to solve so these are some of the unknowns that we need to find to solve uh, to substitute into the relevant equations to solve so first we'll have to find the density of benzene so again uh, it's given the specific gravity is given here for benzene okay so we calculate it by multiplying it with the density of water okay this is water density and then we calculate the area of the tank so we are given information about the area of the tank okay then the area of the leak so again it's one inch it's given as one inch so this is meant for conversion of the unit to feet square okay and finally the pressure gauge again this is given in uh, ATM Okay, so we have to convert it to pound force feet because the other units are in pound mass, pound force and feet. So we have to convert it. So these are all conversion factors for ATM. Again, this can be found in the appendix of the book as well. Okay, now with all the information uh, required, so let's see how we solve the problem. So for the first question, the total volume of benzene that can leak out. Okay, so we times by the tank area times by the 12 feet of volume, 12 feet of benzene that is left. Okay, so this one is actually the conversion factor, converting feet to gallon. So we get gallon. So this is the total benzene that will leak out. So for part B, the length of time for the benzene to leak out completely, which is Te. Okay, so we substitute all the unknowns. So here again, the C0 is selected to be 0 0.61. G is the constant, gravitational constant. Then just now we calculated the area for tank. AT is area for tank. A is the area for the orifice. Okay, this has been calculated. Times by 2, again gravitational constant, GC. And then we have uh, gauge pressure. So just now we converted the atmospheric pressure here. We've already converted to pound force and feet square. So we use that. Okay. Uh, divided by the density of benzene. 
we have already calculated minus um, uh, this gravitational force not uh, minus we have not substituted this this yet so this one is again this two is actually two times this term and two times this term so they've separated it that's why you see a two again here times by the g gravitational constant times by the h l so this is the amount of liquid that is a uh, height of the liquid that is still left in the uh, that is above the hole okay so and then it is uh, square root okay square root is also equals to the power of half and then minus this two again a uh, gravitational constant which is 32.17 again uh, the pg pressure gauge this one 2.12 times 10 to the power of 3 and the density of benzene which is 54.9 so you get this value so when we solve this we get 56.4 minutes so that means we have about 56.4 minutes to stop the leak or to invoke emergency procedure to reduce the impact of the leak so um, beyond this time uh, there's nothing we can do because the leak will stop on its own because uh, the total amount of benzene has escaped from the leak so however the maximum discharge occurs when the hole is first op opened so we want to know what is the maximum discharge that has occurred has occurred so for that we use this maximum uh, discharge uh, equation mass flow rate at time is equals to zero and liquid level of 17 feet okay so the whole this is the whole liquid level so we compute the mass flow rate so we substitute all the knowns so this is the um, area of the orifice the leak okay and then the c naught and then this one has been substituted okay accordingly and we get the mass flow rate per second okay that's how we solve example 4.2 okay so these are the these are the guidelines that we use for selection of process incidents so it can be realistic release incidents or we can also assume worst case incidents so depending on the scenarios so for example how how should we um, assess an incident so if we have a process pipe and let's say the diameter is smaller than two inch so we assume a full bore rupture if it is between two to four inch we assume two inch diameter pipe rupture if it is greater than four inch then we assume 20 percent of rupture if it is hoses so we assume full bore rupture so we have a few guidelines and what do we assume um, when we do risk assessment okay in some cases we have to do worst case incidents so we have uh, certain assumptions that we have to take into consideration okay so that's all for this lecture we will look into more SOLS models in the following lectures when we also look into the consequence of the source models all right thank you